Mo, Mo and, and Mom. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> You're too loud. Sorry, sorry. Hello. Thank you for joining us again. Welcome back. We are Mo and Mom. And today we're going to do The Matrix yes. for our ASMR style movie review. The Matrix is a good old fashion mind blow if you haven't seen it. I'm sure you I like that mind blow. <laughs> Hopefully you've heard about it. But I have to say I love this look. You look so awesome. That's just great. Do your do your evil. Oh, your evil look. No, you're not supposed to grin. Don't grin. <laughs> mean. Ooh, that's it. That's my double. <laughs> that is awesome looking. Uh, oh, thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, this movie was filmed, I want to say, either very right at the beginning of 2000 or late. Oh, I should have checked that. We will do it in editing. So, <laughs> speaking of which, if you haven't seen our introductory video, please take a minute to check us out. We talk about uh, why we end up uh, liking to do movie reviews together, and we also have our disclaimer about how we are not professionals. We do this purely for fun and enjoyment, and we hope you do the same. Um, I hope you can forgive me for having lived so long. <laughs> You were you were very intelligent, oh, and I'm glad I you think so. have very much enjoyed the movies that you have brought into my life. So, same and, here. Yeah, same I, here. I'd like to say that we don't typically do the like the romantic comedies. I think is what people would assume that we like to watch. But, anyways, off topic um, a little bit. But the Matrix is while we're here today, and that may take up a lot of time. So why don't we go ahead and talk about our premise? Okie doke. Now, I am still, I have to admit, I may not be that intelligent, but I still have a, a difficult time with the premise. And we'll, we'll get to that at, at one point where I started going, wait a minute, I am so confused. Yeah, I think you've got a good point, though. But it starts out in a typical day in the life of our main character, who is a male, uh, I'd say probably in his late 20s, early 30s. He seems like a, a typical businessman until you find out that he is a hacker. He's an office grunt, yeah. And uh, that's where you have your scene that you love with the window squeaking. Oh, yes. They're cleaning the windows in the back of this first I scene. I learned and that when they were actually filming this, they were, in fact, cleaning the windows, and the director went, ah, oh, that noise, that horrible, mundane, Scream. life is terrible noise. And he made them keep that. Uh, he went out and asked them to continue just cleaning those windows over and over because he, he wanted that noise throughout the entire that's scene. It. So you'll which, notice that in the first scene where he's having a interesting conversation with his boss and I think we kind of feel bad for him right off the bat. Of course and, and we've all dealt with situations like that. Oh that's true. Mr. Anderson. Yeah and, <laughs> and just the jobs. The just job. The monotony of the job. Yes. As well we've all soul sucking there. job. Yes. Uh, so it picks up really quickly. You did mention that this does not have a lot of lull. There is no a lot of downtime. It keeps the storyline very fast. So uh, it's it is a quick intro that we get that he is a hacker. Uh, somebody stops by his home, uh, is buying a CD from him. I don't know if we ever find out what that is. What we heard. it alludes to some sort of illegal hacking system. Like I'm a assuming side yeah. job he has. It's right. much more exciting Creating than programs his. that people can't get their hands on normally. So that obviously says he's smart guy off the bat. Right. right. He knows his way around computers. Um, obviously, you get caught doing this. I don't exist. So we have a strange moment where his computer starts talking to him unsolicited. It just uh, says something along the lines of, we know who you are and we know what you're interested in. Follow the White Rabbit. So very much a hint to one of my favorite books in, in Disney's. Down the rabbit Down hole. the rabbit hole <laughs> we go on this adventure. Uh, so the guy shows up to buy some illicit hacking material, and he has a very pretty girl with him, uh, who I think herself looks a little bit like a rabbit. She definitely She's had some teeth. some cute teeth, uh, <laughs> that anyways, but she has a tattoo on her back that looks like a white rabbit, so he decides to go out and turns into a very intriguing meeting with another one of our main characters, Trinity. Trinity. Uh, who, of course, gets his interest and starts talking a little bit about... Another her. hacker. Yeah. Yes, and he looks up to her. Yes. I love the line where... He and says, I thought, I thought you were a guy. Yeah. And she goes, well, most guys do. Uh, and I'd love, anyways, just a little bit of good. The, the writing in this is good as well. I've enjoyed some of the lines. 
uh, as well as the the, <laughs> the storyline is such a ride, and it is such a fun ride as long as you don't think too hard about the details of it. Don't just enjoy it. Right. Enjoy the roller right. coaster. It is it a is. roller coaster. Uh, so, without confusing things too much with their conversation, she kind of says, "We're going to be back in touch with you. You know, we know what you're interested in. Uh, you you know what the answer is. The question. The, it's the question. Saying, That's it." Not the answer. You it's already know the it. question that drives you. Something along that line. So, and the answer is out there. We end up having a very interesting scene with him in his office building, and he, he receives a telephone out of the it. mail, and it immediately rings, and it's Morpheus, who he has heard of Morpheus. How I'm not I'm sure, sorry. but he seems regardless. to know what's going on at this point. Well, he just knows Morpheus is a famous computer name, I in the computer so. world, rather, and great. Morpheus says, look, they're coming to get you, stand up and look, you know, and he looks, and yes, they're coming, mm -hmm. the, the black suits are coming. He knows and exactly he, how to get him out of that situation. He says, there's two ways out of this, you either do what I tell you, or you leave with them. So he initially tries, mm -hmm. and uh, makes it to, uh, ducks when he's told, and runs when he's told, and he makes it to an empty office building, and Morpheus instructs him to go out the window on this high rise, which I get dizzy just, I get vertigo just looking at the TV doing that, <laughs> so, but, but uh, he's very much like me. He tries, but uh, decides, nope, I can't do this, this is crazy, so he ends up in their hands. And they take him to their office, their like an building. interrogation area. And, oh, they do that horrible thing where they showed his mouth shut. Oh, it freaks him out. Freaked everybody yeah. out. Now you know Freak something out. weird beyond, beyond is going on that's not normal on a day-to-day -day uh -huh. basis. And is that where they put the thing in his... That's when they put the thing they in his stomach. They put a tracker in his stomach. Um, next day... It looks like a tadpole. They get him out of the building. The good guys get him out and they pick him up, right? Right. They end up messing with his head a little bit and convincing him that he does want to be there and they get that thing out of his stomach yes which convinces him that this is real right and that they're the good guys he wakes up in bed yeah, after they do that he wakes up in bed he's not really sure and thinks it may have been a horrible dream mm -hmm. he's not really sure what's going on so uh so our good guys say do you really want to know the truth do you want to know what's going on you have an option we'll, we'll fast forward a little bit we you have an option to, to go home and pretend it never happened or you can find out the truth. Do you so. want the red pill? <laughs> well, that's we haven't gotten there yet. Anyway, so he has the decision, I think you were saying, between the red pill and the blue pill, which was going back home and waking up and being completely ignorant that any of these crazy things are happening, or Ignorance is bliss. going head first down the rabbit hole and finding out the, the truth. truth. What he's been driving at, it sounds like his entire life, is to find out this. So he, he decides to take the blue pill yeah, so they end up uh which basically wakes him up that's it that's it his body up from the dream state that has been programmed into his brain which is the matrix um so he wakes up in this um pod yeah it's all uh, he's got all these things he's got something in that's helping him hooked breathe up. he's got something that's hooked in the back of his head um and the reason for that being because uh what started the war was ai artificial intelligence yes. and when AI got smarter and decided to take over humanity that because humans are idiots um, that's what created the war and at that time AI was getting their energy from solar so humans in all their brilliance thought okay we'll just as they called it scorch the sky in order to prevent any sunlight from providing the energy for the AI unfortunately AI realized that the human body creates enough electricity that we could be all the energy as they needed. So we became their batteries. Yeah, like a and giant farm. Yes, they, they basically grow, grow babies and keep them stupid, keep their heads into the matrix because you need your brain and you need to be happy in order to actually grow. That's it, they function. So they, they programmed a computer program, which they're calling the matrix. And that is what all of these human batteries are hooked into, believing oh, that they're living their day-to-day -day lives. Thousands and thousands and thousands of all these bodies millions, in yes. these pods that are hooked up and having their energy trained for the AI 
So oh. immediately he is found out. Uh, he's freaking out. He gets this thing out oh, of him. Oh, that was such a good scene. Uh, he sits up in all this goo oh, and pulling the stuff out. Of yes, and he's covered in all these a big electrodes. Comes down and checks him out and says, it's "Like a nanny machine." He's like damaged goods, and I guess decides to Oops, flush him. He will, yeah. So they kind of flush him out of the system, and he's, uh, I think, drowning. And they they come and find him, and uh, the good guys come and find him and rescue him. And it's his friend Trinity and. Um, Morpheus. Morpheus, and we meet some new characters uh, to this show. But Tank and Mouse. And yes, it's they're very are. easy to fall in love with. Um, but the, I guess the they, they show him about the details of the Matrix. This is all in your head. The world that you thought that you lived in is all made up. Um, what you thought was a steak maybe actually tasted like chicken. You know, it was the computers. <laughs> was oatmeal. That's it. Trying to make you happy. Um, uh, one of the things I really loved was when he could learn. They just hooked him up, and he was that like, was I know so jujitsu. Yeah, you they know, just I know programmed his brain with all that. Same thing with the helicopter. That's and right. Trinity needed to uh, suddenly learn how to uh, drive a helicopter, and boom, they could download the program into her brain immediately. Immediately. Boy, so I, I wish, wish I had that. I, that we would great? do less ASMR and more hookup brain learning. Yes, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> um, so the the point of them putting him through this is that the matrix is all in your head. It is up to you to decide how fast you could go, how how tall you could want to jump. You know. Oh, um, I like that when they are learning. After he learned jujitsu, uh, he and Morpheus go into another co computer training mm -hmm. program, and they actually physically fight, even though they're in this computer in their heads to practice and, what he's just learned. And in trying to get this it. through to uh, him. Morpheus says, you think that's air you're breathing now? You know, hmm. hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is all in your head. Yeah, yeah that, I like Very that. well I'm done. Like, wow. So it was a new concept for me. You know, I've very never much. thought of anything like that before. Of course, you're taught that everything's made out of molecules and they're moving and that uh, it makes you think about the way that we view reality. You know, I'm just like, well, if the table is solid. I still can't. Grass and it's the fact vibrating. That this table, solid table in front of us, is full of moving molecules. That just so that's the kind of the same thing on the same line as me. When I learned about the matrix, it kind of fell into the same um, aspect as that with the science. But anyways, so I believe our bad guys in this movie. Actually, I'm pretty sure is the matrix, the creators of the matrix, which are the computer programs, the artificial intelligence that do not want people to be uh, outside of their control. Right. So it sounds like we have one last human colony, and it's at Zion, which is deep. The resistance. That's it, deep in the earth, and that's what our people are now a part of, are trying to fight against the Matrix. So at some point, our bad guys steal Morpheus. He, they get set up. Kidnaps. They, somebody inside of their own, and spoilers, somebody that's inside of their own company. Well, he's sets decided them up. life, realistic life in this destroyed society and scorched world is very difficult. Oh, gosh. You know, they have to eat just basically paste, you know, that has all the nutrients they need, but how bland. It's certainly not as wonderful as inside the Matrix, where they have all the luxuries that they can afford to buy, at, like in normal, your normal world. Um, so this guy is obviously a very selfish little so and so. It turns on them, yes. And he decides yes. to, he wants to be inserted back into the Matrix. So he says, put me back in the Matrix. I Maybe don't want to remember any of this. I don't want to remember the fact that I betrayed all my friends. I want to eat steak every day. I want to be rich. I want to be important. Make me an actor. Um, and I will get you Morpheus. So he actually helps bug their lines. Betrays them. Betrays yeah. them. And, they uh, end up with Morpheus. And... We have already seen our oracle at this point. I absolutely love I about the oracle. our she oracle was great. grandma. She's the perfect She's grandmother. She's wonderful. Um, and she tells everybody believes that our main character Neo is the one, the one that's come to save everybody. And Orpheus has put his life into believing this. And when they go see the oracle, she tells them that he's not the one. Mm -hmm. And that he'll have to make a choice. At some point, they will try to kill Orpheus, and he'll have to choose his life for Orpheus's, yes. pretty much. So he said, you'll have, you know, that's Orpheus's life or your own. You'll have to make a choice. So, And then she tickles me. She <laughs> says, don't worry about it. Here, have a cookie. By the time you finish eating it, you'll feel right as rain. And that 
bothered me at first until I realized that, yes, he eats his cookie and then immediately they are caught up with being chased um, throughout yeah, by the, some of the agents. Mm -hmm. And it dawned on me, oh, I guess right as rain means he just forgot about everything and started just trying to survive. And uh, in trying to survive and realizing that uh, once they actually, of course, Morpheus does sacrifice himself so that he can get away, um, that's when he decides he's not going to let Orpheus die. That he is going to do whatever it takes to get Morpheus back. And without realizing it, he comes to, just by doing what he feels is right, that's as he slowly comes to understand that, yes, he is in fact the one. So, and it's really cool. It's really it's cool. a really good. It's, it's really a good awesome. realization. One of my favorite scenes. I love that long jacket, that long that coat. So when he and Trinity go and bust into the mm -hmm. building, that that's just him in. that's Orpheus. just a great, great scene through that. The music it in looks this so cool. Is really fun. Love Prodigy. Love the, um, they Raging the Machine. I think there's some Rob Zombie in there as well. It's awesome just soundtrack. Good awesome, soundtrack in this awesome one. Soundtrack. But it's it matches the the. The kick butt of the movie as well. Yes. This is where the slow motion fight scenes come from. Where she does the high kick that everybody. Oh, that, that was in the very beginning. Yes, but everybody I'm sure has practiced doing that or made fun of it. It's oh, we see that. But, and his backward oh, motion when he's it. dodging the bullets. That makes my back hurt. <laughs> That was uh, so cool. We've seen that played over and over. And I'm sure, even though we're doing Matrix Review 20 some years after it came out, it's and there's probably not it. a person on the planet with a TV that has not seen The Matrix, oh, there might God. be one or two that we might convince that you can't live, you can't go to your grave without seeing Matrix. <laughs> but it's, it's, it was a great uh, new outlook. You know, something that hasn't been done yet or beaten to death like so many other movies where I can't watch them remake the same plot time after time. It's after still time a premise that is timeless, will hold its own, and very little ever compares to the premise of yes, The Matrix. That's true. And if you enjoyed The Matrix, which has a pretty good ending, I enjoyed the ending. And they go on to having more and more Matrix sequels, of course. Which, which actually were good. Were not bad. But yeah. if you did enjoy uh, the, the premise to this one, I encourage you to watch The Animatrix which was another movie that was released, and it's not uh, at all like The Matrix They're movies. just short little stories. That's an right. anime that has been put together with maybe anywhere between four and ten minute clips, and they are, you know, have nothing to do with each other, but they are fun uh, new outlooks on things. One of my favorite uh, ones was of The Animatrix was The Runner, that uh, knows that he can, I think it's 100 meters in so many seconds, and it is humanly impossible, but he convinced himself he could do it. And even when he injured himself, he pushed his body and his mind past what everybody thought was doable, and he woke himself up in the Matrix, and they put him right back to sleep again. But even afterwards, when he was in a wheelchair, he still was pushing the boundaries of what everyone told him he could and couldn't do, because it is all in your head. Right? And that's kind of what which, this is about. Very much so. But I have to admit, I had one problem which I still, I just could not quite grasp when they put that tadpole thing in his stomach. Of the Matrix, the movie. In the Matrix, yeah, yes. The real movie. I'm going, the wait tracker. a minute, the tracker. But his body was in the pod, and this tracker was just in, in a dream matrix. state in, yeah. in his head. And I'm going, this just does not gel with me. I don't understand the logistics of going to all that trouble to track somebody in their dream state. So I, I, I got very confused. Uh, Maybe I'm just thinking too hard. No, the movie makes you think. And I also said, don't think about too hard because it will ruin the movie for you. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Good advice. Good advice. But just go with the flow. The only thing I could think of would be that uh, they were trying to get to Morpheus at that point. Yes, he was important, but they didn't know how important. So maybe they needed to try to track him. To track get, his dream state. To, was, to get to Morpheus' dream state. That's it, because Morpheus was showing up in the Still Matrix to, to try to get so Neo, right. right? And so they were hoping to catch him inside the Matrix so they could grab him in the Matrix. Okay. And to do that, they needed to Okay, find I like that. Him. Anyways, that's my I guess. Like that. Well, that... 
It's let us know what you think, yeah. right? Let You've us got know a good explanation. So uh, this movie is definitely worth talking about. There is a lot of questionable things that I had, but like I said, it was fun. And if you don't think about it too hard, it's a fun roller coaster ride. Of yeah, it'll make you go a little cross-eyed you think about it too hard. But that's a good thing. Yeah, I enjoyed Most it. Most of the time. And I think it was definitely worth talking about. So I wouldn't say my top 20 anymore, but a, they have not done a better... Um, it's just a classic. It, it will last the, that and Wizard of Oz <laughs> type thing. <laughs> you just, they're the once in a lifetime type thing. I'm not things. sure they're comparable. I mean, <laughs> as far as classic and, you know, um, uh, most of us in a decade, you know, as far as being really, who has not seen The Matrix? I if can't you've never anybody. seen The Matrix, I would love to know if there is anybody out there that has never seen The Matrix. We'll find out. I'm sure there are movies that we haven't seen that people out there would be very horrified to learn that we haven't seen. Yes, if there is, so, if that is the case, I want to know. Please let yeah. me know. Well, anyways, do you have anything else to add about the red pill, blue pill? <laughs> Except that we refer to that way too often in our daily lives about things. <laughs> decisions, oh, it's an inside decisions. joke. Yeah. Uh, that now you know about. So, <laughs> um, please let us know what you think, and we appreciate your time as always. Uh, let us know if we can improve in constructive manners, because we definitely love doing this and we love having your feedback. Um, check out our other movie reviews, and we hope to see you back here soon. All right, we appreciate Have it. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye. I don't know what this is. Okay, donkey, 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 donkey. Yeah, me, 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 me. Oh, gosh, dear. How was that? I don't know. We did, I think I messed it up. No, I don't care. We enjoyed it. Really. Yeah, I had too much fun. I hope people like it. Yeah, they won't. We'll find out. <laughs> okay. I love you. I love you. <laughs>